uh, for those of you who don't remember, this is Councilor Paul Spector. He's uh, he's a council for Ward Two. He's also the sponsor and primary driving force in the ordinance that we were discussing to date. But um, you'll recall I sent I forwarded that article to you guys about some there was some question. In fact, actually, there's a radio show discussing it just as I was coming in about the difference between it's uh, uh, the marketplace. We were discussing the. Uh, paper versus styrofoam and saying it's a flat wash ultimately if you look at it over the whole life span of paper versus styrofoam. They're both terrible. Paul read that article. Actually, Paul's the one who introduced me to that article and he freaked out, ran home, tore his, what's left of his hair out and started crying and weeping and <laughs> realized that something he might have to change tactics. And what he's proposing now actually makes more sense if you think about it. I'll let him explain it because I'm sure he'd be terrified if I expanded on it. So. No, right? He does a great job. Thanks for, thanks for letting me come tonight. Um, the article, and you guys might have seen it, it basically, I still think the paper is better than styrofoam. And so there's kind of people are saying, oh, they're equal, they're equal. They're actually not. If, if, I, if it was simple to do, I would still say, styrofoam should be eliminated, but it is not quite as dramatic a difference. But when we're talking about paper, and they're talking about this in this article, what they're, and probably a marketplace, what they're talking about is paper that is non-compostable. They're talking about paper that's recyclable, perhaps, but not compostable. And the difference is compostable, of course, is you take your eggshells, you take your breadcrumbs, and you throw them in a compost, and they turn into, miraculously, into soil. And so a few places in the country over the last few years, mostly on the West Coast, passed, we're starting to look at this styrofoam ban and other things. And what they passed, instead of passing styrofoam bans, they passed ordinances that, and laws that talked about everything you use in a certain kind of commercial establishment of a certain size had to be compostable. Now that is a vastly better thing because when you have something that's compostable, you're not having to throw it in a landfill, you're not having to spend the energy in, that it takes to recycle it. So what we are proposing, and we're actually not the first place in Massachusetts to do this, Brookline, Mass, which is a much bigger community than us, so I'm sure they hit much more opposition from their commercial establishments, went ahead and did a similar ordinance just about a year ago. And we've looked at that ordinance and we're gonna copy that ordinance. And basically that ordinance says that in any commercial establishment over 2,000 square feet, so that would mean that somebody, 2,000 square feet means it's a fairly good sized place. So somebody, I think we were talking about somebody's food cart. The food cart wouldn't be included in that. A commercial establishment means that if it's a a non-commercial establishment, you could still go ahead and use styrofoam. And what this also does, uh, styrofoam, you could also use non-compostables. What this does is not only cover styrofoam, but it also covers something that nobody argues about is really terrible, which are single-use plastic bags. Single-use plastic bags are the kind of things you get, say, in Stop and Shop, and they say you want plastic or paper, and they hand you a plastic thing, or nine of them for your groceries, you know, or 15 of them. And they're actually wonderful. I brought the dog because they're actually good for one thing, which is when you go for a walk with your dog. But aside from that, what those bags do, so more than just the styrofoam, those bags, not only do you see them hanging in the trees and making a mess everywhere, they are not compostable. And where they are ending up primarily are in our oceans. They're being thrown away. They don't kind of die because they're plastic. They do disintegrate, but they disintegrate into small pieces that are being incredibly harmful. We're finding them in birds, you're finding them all over. So this is something that, so we not only get rid of the, by doing an ordinance like this, we not only get rid of styrofoam, we not only get rid of other recyclables that are not compostable, say a plastic cup. There's a, you know, it takes a lot of energy to produce a plastic cup, and even though you might be able to recycle it, it still takes energy, so the carbon footprint of a plastic cup is pretty large. So instead of doing that, this compostable ordinance will cover the styrofoam, it'll cover single-use bags, it'll cover other things at commercial establishments 
that you can't just throw into a compost bin. Now, a lot of people say, well, God, how are they going to do that? Well, there are a number of us, you know, what do you do with, you know, plastic, how about plastic forks and plastic cups and all those things? How can you possibly do that, you know, if you're an establishment? Well, we have a number, and you guys probably found, if you go down to just one, if you go down to the yogurt, I forgot the name, what's that yogurt place? Go with Berry. The, go Berry. So Goberry, you get those compostable forks. They look just like plastic forks, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, I threw them in my compost and a year later. They're still, still looking like forks. <laughs> kind of like, you want to use them as forks, but they still kind of look. But they eventually will compost. And so that ordinance is a much more potent ordinance. It's much more of an environmentally friendly ordinance. And part of us passing that, if we were to pass it just like Brookline passed it, they're now looking at this in Concord. If we were to pass it, we'd certainly talk to the folks in Amherst. And I bet you Amherst passes it because just for the sheer competition, they don't want us to do anything that they don't do. They'll pass it. We'll talk to the folks in East Hampton. This is a really important thing that if this kind of work <coughs> passes in a lot of cities and in states, that it could have a real impact a much bigger impact than say the, say the Star Fund. So, did I cover most of it? Yeah, um, the state currently and the state legislature are about to be approved, possibly. It's a state um, mandate for large corporations to compost. Yeah. So this might be statewide and make it easier. I see a few like very large problems with this. One being, you ta we're tackling, um, what we were talking to, I forget what someone was, but we were talking to somebody about this as well, um, and we talked about how difficult it would be to both do containers and bags in the same foul swoop. And it, like, I don't know how, if we want to bite it off all at once or nibble it off, but have everybody get a piece. You of think it. just like me, that's what I, <laughs> early on, we were thinking about this in terms of we had always thought. We would, the plastic bags is actually much more serious than the styrofoam. So early on, and Bill knew this, Councilor Adams and I talked to Councilor Dwight, and we said, here's our strategy. Let's first do the styrofoam because it's pretty easy. And then once we pass that, or we thought it would be pretty easy, and I do think it would be pretty easy to just do the styrofoam. And we thought, okay, we'll take that, that would be the first nibble, and then we'll nibble at something else that might be a little harder for people to digest because the bags might be something where we hit a little more opposition. However, since the styrofoam, we don't want to just do something that isn't necessarily going to do much. And because Brookline was able to do this, and they were able to do it pretty easily in a larger community, we think this community is ready to do something like this. I just think, I just find that like, I don't necessarily think that this community is ready to do that. Just like by looking, I think that there's a perception that like there's everyone here is super environmental, which I think there's a large, large portion of them. But then there's also people who aren't. And like, what it, what would happen if we didn't pass? If we passed something that was only p uh, plastic bags, let's say, um, and then it wouldn't pass. Or like if we if we pass the plastic bags, it passed. That would be great. We have like we have a lot of it done, a lot of it covered. But if we try to pass everything at once, it's, I just don't think it's like possible. So there's two things, and I, I think you maybe, I think your thinking is right, which is how we're thinking, which is, we're not going to try and do this tomorrow. We're going to take a year to bring this ordinance up. We actually have a neat little plan, which is we're going to ask Councilor Dwight to call a spe if he's still around, a special session of the council mm -hmm. next year on Earth Day. And we want to spend this year, we, ha we have a little bit of um, a track record of looking at something that the community might find really difficult. So I was involved for about five years on something I think you guys talked about, yeah. stormwater, mm -hmm. all right? A new tax. You talk about things that people really don't like. It's when you ask them to pay for something that they were already getting for free. And that's essentially, and stormwater, which is a fee, basically, you know, a lot of people said was a tax. For five years, we looked at this and waited, and people were saying, you'll never, people are going to be up in arms over this thing. But I think through a process, which actually Bill was very instrumental in helping and putting together, we spent, I think it was about a year, 
Almost two. Actually. Almost two. Yeah. Educating the public. So we had meetings in every ward. We had citywide meetings. We took questions from people. And at first, you know, there were a lot of people who were really angry and it was like, oh my God, you guys are going to just go ahead and, and you know, shove this down our throats. Which in fact, you know, basically the council just votes on this. I have no doubt that the council would have voted four years ago and passed a stormwater ordinance. And I think people would have been really angry about it. But we spent, and I have no doubt that even a month from now, the council would pass a compostable ordinance. Mm -hmm. But by going ahead and spending a whole year and listening to people and, talk, and hearing their concerns and modifying it, that we actually have voted, first of all, the council passed it unanimously, which was for something that big was pretty great. And we had very, very little opposition at the end because of the way we just took our time, talked to people, got them to understand the importance of the issue. So I think you're right. Right now, I think, one, the council could pass it, and people, a lot of people in this, even in this town would be pretty angry about it. But I think if we take our time and plan this correctly, and that's part of where you guys came in, that you've already done some work, and you've looked at, you've done some surveys, and we need to kind of understand where are the restaurants on this, where are the various supermarkets and other stores on this? And we're trying to actually go to them and talk to them, those establishments. We're trying to get the Chamber of Commerce behind this the same way they were behind Stormwater. So I think it's going to take some work. I, I have sort of two things. My first thing is I think it would be really great is if when it was presented that there would be a possibility that, that it was all presented together like having the uh, the compostable idea, the styrofoam, and the plastic bags, but that there would be the opportunity if people were really opposed to one part of it for it to still be able to be passed, even though it was just for the styrofoam, because I think, like, I mean, the first thing I was thinking it would kind of be a bummer if everyone was really just opposed to just the uh, plastic bag part, and that's why nothing ends up yeah, getting passed. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think if there's some sort of clause or something in there that makes it possible for that to happen. So let me explain why we, with the styrofoam, which I still think there should be a ban on styrofoam. So even though the Boston Globe has this article, I'm still a little suspicious sometimes of who did the research on what, um, and even though it was on Marketplace. I still think a ban on styrofoam. Here was the problem with the styrofoam. If we pass a styrofoam ban, which like they did in Amherst, and then we talked to the folks in Amherst, and what they said was some of the establishments went from styrofoam to compostable. Great. Some of the establishments went from styrofoam to paper that wasn't compostable. Not so great. Some of the establishments went from styrofoam to plastic. Really not great. Probably even could be in the long run in the CO2 footprint and everything worse than the styrofoam. <coughs> Certainly not. So we said, well, if we ban styrofoam, and then we say, okay, we're banning styrofoam, and you've got a place that's using styrofoam, a restaurant. You can't use styrofoam, and in fact, we won't let you use plastic either. Well, that's not, or we won't even let you use paper. You have to use compostable. You've used styrofoam, now you have to use compostable. Well, guess what? If you weren't using styrofoam, but you were using paper that was not compostable, it's not fair now. We have to do something that is for everybody. So the fact that the styrofoam ban alone was not gonna produce the kind of outcome we wanted. And we talked to Amherst, and they had wished they had passed a compostable. But it may be that we can divide it into two sections. I'm not sure, we'd have to look at that. And, and then something we should be clear on, um, what you guys were describing are, is if this went up as a ballot measure, if the community voted on it. We'll, we'll follow, we'll, you know, and that's a possibility, that's a possible avenue, I don't know, it's called a referendum. Um, I think more likely this is going to be just simply proposed and voted on by the council. So the divided vote that you would see would come on the council, and the council is susceptible to public influence. But right now, I would suspect, as Councilor Specter said, there is a sentiment that would be inclined to favor, but they certainly want to have all the ducks in a row and the understanding of and, you know, a lot of the research that you guys have done, but some more expanded research about impacts, effects, and changes. But so it's, that's not as big a hurdle. If you turn it into a, if it, if it becomes a referendum question, then it's a campaign, and it'll be 
people pro voting, you know, promoting the pro and people promoting con to be money invested. And then come election day, um, and and anyone under eighteen doesn't get their way in on it, and blah blah blah. So, my second thing I was going to say is, uh, I think I think I was one of the people that was doing the economic um, right. effects of it, and one thing was was that obviously. <coughs> It would it would not be as expensive. If they're changing something like wa like that, have <coughs> waxed paper, waxed cardboard, something like that. But I don't. I like, I feel like that might be actually create a bigger <coughs> opposition, even though it would be more beneficial. And if we really want to push for that, I think that would be it would definitely be better. But switching all the way over to compostable things and also getting rid of plastic bags, whether they wanted to use an alternative thing, um, or or whatever that would be, I think they were. This widens. Um, it widens the environmental impact in a good way, but also widens the economic impact on certain restaurants as well. And along those lines, I will, I was when I was surveying, a lot of people said, well, going to plastic wouldn't be that bad but for our business. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And then we went and saw King Street Eats, who is starting to um, do compostable delivery and compostable like forks and everything and they said that it's taking a huge impact on their um, financials and although they're, like, they're really happy about it they're like yeah it's impacting us and then we went right after what was that Chinese food place? Sakura Buffet. We went to Sakura and we asked like would how would this impact you and the man said that he might go under like he might not even be able to with just plastic so I, I think we have to like consider how much it's going to affect the economy going to compostable because it's so much more expensive. Let, let's just, uh, one thing though, these are establishments and we could raise the size. So we're looking at larger establishments. 2,000 square foot so commercial is about 2,000. 2,000. I mean, we could look at it and raise the size. We're also talking to Brookline because the same arguments probably have come up in other communities and how they handle it. In my experience, the first reaction I usually get, and I have the same reaction, is can't do that. I don't want to change. I mean, I, somebody says something, my, my kids just asked me something. I said, no, it can't. we just can't do that, Abby. And then I thought about it a while, and I went, but knee-jerk reaction of most people and most businesses, and I know I do this in mine, is you tell me some other way, well, I've been doing it this way for a long time, is I can't do it. And you start to find out, well, maybe you can. And one of the things, if we look at some of the establishments, is why is Stop and Shop? I think Stop and Shop will actually be behind this. Because Stop and Shop starts to look at some other models, which is they really want for their own benefit. Not necessarily for, you know how Stop and Shop has really pushed bringing your own bags? Yeah. Because you know what? In the long run for Stop and Shop, once people are educated to do that, people are bringing, they don't have to pay for bags anymore. Right? And so there are also people who, who want to go ahead and do this. Now, we can look at size of the commercial establishment and say, hey, maybe it's not fair. Maybe you have to be really pretty big. Um, and maybe small places should be more exempt. How I should also point out and remind everyone, there's going to be, it's very possible it's going to be a state-mandated requirement for composting anyway. Composting compostable? Or compostable, but converting to compostable and reducing yeah. landfill uh, with recyclable and any waste material, so that it's that significant. These will be mandated changes on some level in this ordinance over the course of this year. If that passes, if the state law passes, this will just piggyback on it. And it wouldn't be actually vastly much different than that. And these folks would be compelled to make those changes anyway. Would, those, would that be compostable food or compostable? Com all, hopefully all food's compostable. <laughs> Because right, there weren't the, yeah, right, but the food containers As well. and food containers, but not only food containers, but other forms of um, waste generation. This is the start of that: is that to to make waste products, blister packs, things like that, all to be compostable. It, it's interesting that since 19, I think it's 80. There's some studies. The amount of packaging that has gone into both food that you buy at a store, or the bags that you then get, or the, the takeout food, the amount of packaging has increased like sixfold. Mm -hmm. So one of the things some of us folks know who are older and more decrepit from way back is 
when we used to go to places, they actually still, when you were a kid, did they have takeout bills and things like that? I think they did. Yeah, bills even back, yeah, back then. Yeah, even back then. That people seem to survive pretty well using paper things. I mean, maybe it didn't keep your food quite as hot. Maybe it wasn't quite as convenient. But it's also pretty inconvenient what all of this packaging is doing to the environment. And it is hard to be a leader of this. And Northampton has often been leader, a leader on things that aren't necessarily the most popular thing. And part of this is educating and be a, being a leader on this. It won't do a big, it won't do much of anything if Northampton is the only town or one of the only two or three to do this. It does something if this becomes a movement. As we're seeing, the legislature is looking at this. There are a couple other states looking at this. And pretty soon, that becomes something that people start to get educated about and understand just how horrendous packaging, just packaging, has been to the environment on multiple levels. Oh, um, they, there, there's, I mean, there are corporations now that are that have made this into an, an, an industry, you know, like Tetra Pak, or um, I think of any others right now, but you know, that, you know, like, you know, you see on your juice packets, is Tetra Pak, you know, supply, it just supplied the packaging, and that's probably another reason why it's going to be harder to get over, especially, you know, you know, if there's like a corporate interest involved in some of these companies. One thing that you made me think of before when you were saying how there's always a way to change, I remember, um, when I was back looking into our school switching over to styrofoam, which very ironically I just noticed I have not seen a styrofoam plate or yeah. anything like that in the past two months. That's because you're scared. So I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't know scared what really happened. Yeah. All the Environmental Club, they've done a lot in our school, which I think is really great. But um, when I interviewed the head cook type person at the high school, she said that without a doubt, if they had asked before they had made that decision, there are definitely ways that they could have changed to meet that way, like whether it's, I, mean, I don't remember what exactly she was saying, but I think there's always a way that restaurants can sort of find alternative methods of maybe dealing with something that would help that cost. Even if maybe that would put more, more effort on to them, but that energy, they might, be able, they might be more okay with the energy versus the money if it's coming, like exerting themselves. Um, I think there's, I don't know by like just by observation i feel like smaller com companies like dunkin donuts in particular um use the most amount of plastic and styrofoam yeah. and like all these awful products and it's just like if we're going to go ahead and do this i don't think that going by size of company or like like square footage is necessarily the best way to decide like who does and who doesn't have to follow this. Um, just one thing, you may be right that we may have to look at that. It's total square footage too. So Dunkin' Donuts actually, I believe, has four different places throughout the city. So it's total square footage. But you might be right. There might be places, and I'm not sure how we would. We'd have to take a look at that. That's a good point. But we have to see how do we work with that. It is like substance though. You know, like <coughs> Dunkin' Donuts is coffee. So they have to do with all hot stuff. So they kind of need stuff. And Dunkin' Donuts is a multinational corporation. Well, Amherst, Amherst passed it, and they have a Dunkin' Donuts, and Dunkin' Donuts was their <laughs> the, the strongest objector to the styrofoam, but they went ahead and did it. Well, the marketplace report is Dunkin' Donuts is going to, and McDonald's are going to paper cups, but they're not necessarily recyclable paper cups. McDonald's, it's interesting, is McDonald's, and who knows why? It could be because it's a, you know, it's a good marketing thing. Environmentalism is a good marketing tool. Is looking very much at doing all compostable yeah. stuff. So if McDonald's goes to all compostable, what you may then see is well, Burger King has to go to all compostable, and then mm -hmm. um, their food isn't compostable. No. Nor digestive. Jim Nash, 18 Montefiore, <laughs> member of the public. So uh, one of the things that Sam raised the issue of the, people are worrying about if, if they got to pay more for packaging, how are they going to compete? The part of what this idea is that everybody's, the packaging costs more for everybody, everybody's going to be raising their, their prices. So if I'm selling coffee, the guy across the street, he's also paying more for his cups as well. So the the baseline price of everything will go up 
pretty much the same for everybody. It's not like somebody will have this huge disadvantage all of a sudden. Right. Um, just, a, just a quick housekeeping note. Do we, do we need to present our PowerPoint? Because I feel like we're having a good discussion. I you, you don't I would love necessarily. To see I mean, but he, he hasn't seen your I'd PowerPoint. I'd love to see that. I'd also it's... love to see anything you have on your survey. That would be fantastic. I, yeah, I didn't get. I, couldn't get the connection materials to show it on the smart board. Okay. So if you want, we can do we can do what we did last time and just show it on my laptop. But um, our uh, survey is just about the styrofoam issue because we hadn't realized right. you were talking about plastic. That would be bags great. Even just the styrofoam issue okay. would be really helpful. We, you want to do that? Um, yeah, well, I'd love to hear that. Can we just have a quick housekeeping thing for the minutes? Like 15 minutes, like we have to approve the minutes. Okay. Um, somebody passed over the minutes. I motion. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Do, do you guys want to um, do you want to do the PowerPoint, or you just want to do a, a a verbal presentation? I don't know if you guys got to introduce the survey information in the PowerPoint yet. We haven't. Okay, we so then maybe maybe we should just about talk about that. But I think that's the thing that has the most keen interest: the environmental impact and the economic impact discussion. I think we can send. We can actually let Councilor Spector access it through the Google Docs. So, yeah. so, but, but the, this stuff, the survey, I think, is particularly dramatic. Okay, so do we just want to like go around and say what places you went to? Um, and do we want to first say exactly what the questions were we were asking? So does anybody have a copy of that? I have. Okay. Do you want to? <coughs> um, well, should I just like talk about the restaurants I went to? Yeah. Um, first, yeah. let's can I take this and show this to Councilor yeah, yeah, this is just a copy of one of those things. But she needs it to read off. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I don't. Well, it's like we basic stuff. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of them. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so we went to 21 places downtown, and some of them were chains, like Dunkin' Donuts, um, but most of them were just like local places, and three use styrofoam for something, mm -hmm. and 18 don't. And I think all of them are willing to um, like change to either cardboard or paper. Yeah, or a lot or of just them. Any alternative. A lot of them were some like of them very like open into to it. it. They were like, oh, yeah. like that sounds awesome. The only thing we encountered was the language barrier for some of the restaurants. Some restaurants. We, they <laughs> they didn't even know what styrofoam was or what tin foil or cardboard or any alternative was. So they all like automatically said no because they thought that we would get them in trouble for using something that's bad when we really have no power at all. Yeah. So they, they didn't know what it was, so we didn't really report them in our results. A lot but of. Other than that, it was like. So it was 20, we went to 21, and only yeah. yeah. three of the places. Used styrofoam. Yeah. Including, um, so Sura, they said they did, so I'm pretty sure they do, for takeout. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Donuts and the Chowder House, the new Super oh, the yeah. but, but they're they, working on facing it. They're trying to get it out. Yeah, because I don't think they're, when their other one does. In Smithsonian? The yeah. 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 And they yeah. said they were primarily cardboard anyways, it's just like a little bit. Of yeah, and this people were using plastic, paper, cardboard, um, Haymarket was using compostable, mm -hmm. Potato paper. There's a lot of weird. Uh, and sometimes we're using like ceramic, like washable stuff. So that's. We ceramic to go stuff? No. Oh. Ceramic, like in house oh, okay. stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Were, were you as. I mean, I'm surprised. But were, were the rest of you surprised that it was that low a number? Yeah. yeah. I, was was I, I think what. I think, like, looking at downtown, I think there's going to be a lot less compostable because. I don't know, like downtown, we think those less. Pump, yeah, a lot less companies using pump, uh, not using pump style. Yeah, using yeah. styrofoam. Because it's a lot of local places. Yeah, that are, it's like, it's we went to King Street and I feel like we got a lot that were using. Yeah, that was. Oh, so yours, which is more just trained. The, yours yours downtown. Were just the downtown. Ours yeah. is just yeah. downtown. Yeah. Um, so okay. They did King Street, they did Florence. So, go, okay. They covered the system. So now I'm, so you know, now I'm at the edge, I want to hear the results of the other. 
we did King Street. There's still like a bunch of places that we have to follow up with because their managers weren't in or they couldn't answer questions. So we have to write to the corporations. But um, we have mostly all the places that use styrofoam. Definitely use them for coffee. And then really the places that use them for besides coffee was Sakura and Taco Bell. So the guy at Taco Bell said that they hadn't, it wasn't really, it had, been, it had never been a discussion um, to take it out. And then, where was it that we went? Oh, and then Burger King, they said that they don't even think that their corporation offers, like not styrofoam things, because they said, we get a catalog, we have to decide what kind of like packaging to order. So it's already like pre, preset what their options are. Yeah. So they're like, this is like a bigger corporation problem then. And as far as I can us. tell, I think that's the majority of the corporations is that they get a catalog. We, but for things like friendlies, we couldn't even see, we couldn't even talk to anybody unless, unless it was corporation. We're like, well, like how apt is that? Like how much are, how likely is it that they will respond? And they're like, it's not very likely. Like no, no, they said that friendlies they would. It was at like Burger King that they said they wouldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. friendlies is like semi-local. So. Yeah, sure. So I did, I did the Florence area, and I would say it was about split. Um, like there's the places like the cup. What? How many? Uh, I think it was ten or eleven. Okay. Um, so the, the cup and top cafe and. Um, like the more, the, like, and also like evo the cafe evolution, like those days they were they were very like for not using styrofoam and stuff. But then when I went into A1 and Florence Pizza, which were both owned owned by the same person, they both gave a, a not the nicest response. I would say like they were like no, <laughs> they, like they more or less said no way in hell. Like straight up to me, they're just like it's ridiculous. Just give up. Like they were, they seemed very opposed to it. And then I asked them what percentage it was, even that they were using, and they would say one third at most. Like, it was mostly um, only for like salad things. They would say for most mostly sandwiches and pizzas. They don't even need it for that. So I I don't know how accurate that was. Sort of. I thought it was more just. Uh, opposition to that, and then the Pizza Factory and um, Stars Pizza, I think they were also both the same as well, but they both work as opposed. It was more just, this is the way we've been doing it forever, but we're not like a but we've just never thought about it. So, it was about 50-50 in Florence, and it seemed, I think more information would make that turn into more like E20 or maybe even better than that. Did anyone go to Philos, the new Greek place? Uh, no. Oh. And what and what do they use? Uh, they said they don't use styrofoam. Wait, isn't it? It's the owned same? by the same yeah, guy as Florence and A no, no, Pizza. No, so they, 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 they were at the Or maybe files. they didn't know. No, they like. Oh yeah, I talked to the friendlies in Florence, yeah. and they the said first no. time we came, hmm. they said oh, they yeah. used cardboard plastic and all. I've had more than they use. Yeah, first time I went to the friendlies in Florence, they were kind of moody and stuff. And then the next time I, I came, I came back and I came back to, like kind of wanted to get a better answer. And their manager and us in, he was really nice, and he was just like, "Yeah, we barely use it, but it's what like I think it's, I think it's the same sort of thing where it's all of them are doing like using it for the same things and." They don't know how much we play they can do. So one of the interesting things is even one franchise is making the parent corporation quite a few numbers of thousands of dollars a year. So one of the interesting things was if a local community, I don't know what the, I'm going to see if Brookline has Dunkin' Donuts and Friendlies, but I would imagine they didn't just close, the corporation said, you know what, we're not going to do this, so we're just going to shut down that Friendlies. Well, and also, Big Y and Friendlies are both corporately, and Dunkin' Donuts are all corporately ed based in Massachusetts. So again, with the state legislation, it would the, their, their home offices and they're, and they're, are going to have to abide by those regulations. So Bill's more them. optimistic on state stuff. I'm just, I, mean, it's, 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 I think those corporations also have more clout they, in terms of the legislative money that goes in. I, so I'm I, not confident Massachusetts is going to lead the nation in that one. But if enough local communities do this, mm -hmm. they're going to have to offer it anyway to everybody in the state. Didn't our agent just get the five-star rating? We, yeah. Yes. You heard that? Yes. Yeah. Right. 
The I'm, first, I'm not going to repeat this. The first this. city in the country. First the first city, city in the, the only city in the entire country with a five star rating. Of what? And it's the same, you know, the star rating you get on your refrigerator, so energy star ratings, and those. They're now doing that for communities. And so this is a national survey system. And in fact, most, most people are now required to get a, a particularly star rating for refrigerators on, if you're purchasing a, a refrigerator. The star rating now takes into consideration uh, the community's work towards sustainability, it's, it's work towards composting, income, schools, all that stuff, and energy efficiency. Northampton, the only city in the entire country, got the five star rating, got the highest rating in the entire country. Now other communities will eventually achieve it, but Northampton was also where they did the laboratory, where they studied and how they were gonna establish the criteria. So all New York City is going to be weighed against mm -hmm. Northampton, Massachusetts, which are going to raise the high bar. It's also skewed, highly yeah. skewed. If they well, it's that. different because the criteria, it's exhaustive, the application. It's, it's, it's about that thick, and every, every parameter they discuss, the quality of life and sustainable issues. Clearly, New York's going to have different challenges than we have. We have a lot more flexibility. But this star rating system felt that Northampton was their model. And they voted us as, I mean, that, that's, you know, and it's, it's really, I've been trying to brag, that, brag on that to people who just kind of roll, yeah, five stars for what? And the fact is, is that we not only talk the talk, we walk the walk, and the most important thing is we're a viable, vibrant community. It's not like it killed us, it's not like it destroyed us or anything else, it's that actually we're the envy of a lot of communities in the state, and we still pulled this off. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I'm really glad to know. <laughs> anyone who knows about it, go spread the word because yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. it's worth bragging about. It's it's and each of the steps along the way. Sometimes it's hard, and we've taken we've been on the council a long time. <laughs> and things like the stretch code, which is you know a lot of builders Stretcher building codes, building codes where you have to you know very stringent on what you have to do. And I have friends who are builders. They were screaming at me about it because mm -hmm. it requires them to make changes. And yet now some of those same folks. Some of them are working at my house right now, today, are saying, you know, now that everybody has to do it, it's not just them. Everybody has to do their understanding how effective and efficient this has been. I don't look forward to having the, you know, the experience which we'll have from a lot of folks when we go to these communities meetings like you had for a moment and we'll have for a lot of time. There are going to be people who are really, like as you're saying, upset about this, mm -hmm. angry about it, and our job is to understand where they're coming from and hopefully move them a little bit and if they have some you know maybe some ways we can have some leniency about the time how long do we phase this in you know we can look at time phasing it we can look at size but you know it's not always a fun thing even if it's the right thing to do and and I think that education process is a is an important one okay I'm gonna jump in real quick and use that as like a transition into one of the points of our agenda. Um, so if you look at number seven, it's called 2793. And it was this, um, it was like a training that I went to the other day for a grassroots organization actually. And what it stands for is 27 words or less, nine seconds to say it, and three or less main points. And basically it's your elevator pitch. So I think that this will yeah. be especially, when that happens, yeah. It's Good. really yeah. hard to do, and it's really great to pull out to be able to have. So I was yeah. originally going to have everyone write that, but I don't know how people are feeling about that. But no, we're, we're a little yeah, yeah we so were. it's like it's a good thing to think about. Just start like. Can you repeat what it is again? It's 27 words or less, nine seconds to say it, and three or less main points. And it's like a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah, yeah, so really that's hard. Pretty <laughs> yeah. no. Which we could also use as like a recruitment method when people ask like what yeah. is youth commission. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, are you listening carefully? Yeah, I actually I'm, I'm congenitally predisposed to never say anything in twenty seven words or less, but one thing is that I was hoping I mean this is this is as I said, this is your penultimate meeting. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, that's yeah, I've already seen. you've got to take our time's up. Yeah, but, but I think you know, one of the other things along with that, but I mean, I think we, we have to think about what we're gonna do with the last meeting. And the okay. fact is, uh, I'm figuring out how many of you guys are coming back, but you'll be the new leadership on, the, in the, on this committee. And what Councilor Spector is described as being laid out before you, and hopefully um, you guys will wanna take this up when 
well, those of you who are coming back do come back, because I, th I think the Youth Commission is going to be an important factor in this, and, and principally because, once again, this is one of these things that affects everybody, but rarely does anyone under the age of 18 get consulted. They're not going to be asked about what they think about it and how it would impact them. And so, and plus, to have you got your stamp of approval, if that should happen, would mean a lot. It'd, be, it'd have a significant influence on how people discuss it and vote on it as well. You, to do the elevator pitch, I don't know if you want to try and do that because here's the tricky part right now. As Council Inspector described, it hasn't been really fully formed yet as to how, what the process is or even what it is that we're going to be doing. Um, so maybe a little premature at this point to, but to do that. But even just thinking about it, because like, I know people right. ask me, like, oh, so what exactly is the Youth Commission? Like, oh, to describe well, the Youth Commission. You, I think you can like, apply it to a whole Everything. bunch of yeah. things. Yeah. But no, I think that's good. Actually, to describe the Youth Commission, and that goes into what the last meeting might be, which is about recruitment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so real quick, wait, do you have something to say about, about that? recruitment? And like okay, wait, real quick, um, the Mayor's Secretary, Kurt Clopity, is just retired, so a little thank you note, if everyone can sign it, I'm sure it would be very nice. So and guys, are you done with, do you have any questions for me? or Because I, I really appreciate what you've done. If I can get the PowerPoint and any survey results, that would be fantastic. But yeah. do you have anything else? I don't think we have the survey results gathered onto one document yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I checked today. Okay. Um, do it did you want us to present the PowerPoint or did you just want to look at it? You can it's go online. I can go it. online and look at it because you guys have seen. If you we think I should look at it with you, I'm happy do to do that. But I can also. We have some editing to do, so okay. if we can just leave that and then let us edit it all out. And, and then, then once we get the survey data compiled, we can share so it. Send them the link in the. I'm just curious how many of you are um, coming, either even just coming back to Northampton High next year if you're all from Northampton. How many of you are coming back? Yeah, we have about half. Yes. Yeah. So how many of us are leaving? Let's raise our hands. Okay. So that segues into my thing. I was going to say that. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. You know, I something to say first. Um, well, sure. I heard something about like we're doing like an end of the year Should thing. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, like, well, um, I was talking with like a few people, and we thought that like maybe it would be good if we did something like that. That was like kind of like a banquet that was also like recruitment where you like you point. have to bring someone. Yeah. So it's kind of like a kind of bring up a replacement. Okay, yeah. No, yeah, that's just like what I was talking with people about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so June 9th, yes, June 9th is the eighth grade coming into high school thingy where like you show the clubs and stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye Dakota. Oh, bye, Paul. I think we could probably have like some sort of thing there. If two people um, or how many people? Are there? I don't know. I would guess Mr. Um, Lombardi. Should make or I bet if I ask guys handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ask in the office. Did you know so the what? Cindy's go. Oh yeah. Cindy's yeah. short. Yeah. 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 The mayor's office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and then, so the reason. Yeah. She's now Kareem. Oh. She replaced Kareem. Oh, really? Yeah. She's here. Actually, she's she's now Kareem. And the reason she left was because they had more money here, and now apparently they're offering her job for more than she even made here. That's, that's yeah. essentially what happened. Yeah. So, but so if you guys want, yeah, you can. Uh, um, she's she's here, and if um, and she know, I mean, yeah, actually, she'd be the perfect person to try and figure out how to get to. Um, Get on on the on that little gathering at, at JFK. Yeah, because that's how I found out about it. Was that the high school? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the high school? Yeah. Yeah. It's a kettle light show. Yeah, it's at the. We should get like. I think the most effective ones are you hand out to get an annoying little <laughs> thing and ask them to put it on like an email list or something. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Um, can, we should wait, definitely wait. write that 27 thirty nine thirty. Twenty seven nine thirty. So, so is your friend if you're interested in like working at that booth? I am, but I can't. I mean, all my friends are the booth. So if we can have like two or three people working at the table, I know that's what we did last year. Um, uh, I have a suggestion as somebody who ran the Best Buy booth and was like pretty successful. You guys should set up like music with speakers 
lots of candy and like possibly like some type of apples, like action activity. So it's like a really jubilant yeah. area. Yeah. 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 Or like yeah, just like look cool. <laughs> Look cool, like just put out like a really big, oh, like an air of popularity is really is the only way to get. Do we need to like, sign up for the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is messed up. No, no, it has yeah. like the football guys do it for best buddies, and it was really like a bad thing. It's really interesting. No, the pressure were like, please. Do we have a <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so wait, let's get back on track here. We're going to go to the So when uh, is the banquet slash where is it? No, 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 no. No, no like the end of the year celebration slash recruitment. Okay, slash we graduate on the 1st, which is a Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday. I was making fun of anybody who's dogging that Sunday. Yeah, there's a project for the Youth Commission. Come up with a town animal. Ferret. So we really can compose should be what? A dolphin? Apparently, 40% of dolphins are gay. <laughs> yeah, except 100 percent of them live in the ocean. So, yeah, there's no we, we haven't got one. Where do you go? Like what fauna do we have? Raccoons, squirrels, bears. We have really boring bears. 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 Okay, so what? Okay, let's get back on track so that we can leave. Okay, the banquet. Uh, plan is everybody bring one. Okay, are we doing a pizza? Pizza. Yeah. Pizza, and if yeah. you can bring a dish, that would be I'll awesome. Bring some like potatoes out. Share. And let's see. Okay, uh, Sam and I will come up with an agenda. Right? Yeah. Do you get? Do you want drinks too? Yeah. So stuff. Better. I was. I, that's what I was kind of. Can we have someone cater it? Black tie. Event. Okay, that's what I said. But then, would that be too? I, I think that's over time, budget. That's uh, really yeah. yeah. fine. Like, like we have a lot of money, but we would like you know Seth Meyers. We can still be Seth Meyers. We have Seth Meyers to come and like, like, carry the event. Yeah. Hey, I have a suit. I forgot. Like to do Me. Do you get a suit? We have a couple weeks to do it. That should all be on. Well, I have to charge. I mean, you probably give me a discount, but it's, yeah, but like, it's, like, it's by, you pay by the person. Yeah. So, okay. it's going to be a show. Are we in agreement for that event? Yes. 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 Is it here? Can we demo it? Right here? Yes, you're in here. Well, it's set up the room kind of nice. Oh, well, okay, Do we need, like, people to help come set up early? Yeah, yeah let's get streamers. Can we get the mayor? Can we get the mayor here? I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Okay. Send me an email reminding that. Yeah, it's here about four times. Yeah, okay. We'll get the mayor to do it. Can we have the music? Can somebody make a playlist? Like last little too. Huh? Like last little too. That's my jazz. Can we have someone announce every entrance? Oh, yes. Can we have a photographer? Oh my god. Well, I've got, I'll bring my camera. Maybe we should get like a senior. Oh, did anything come out of trying to get someone to go down to the radio? Well, I'll take a picture and build light. That's right. I'll take a picture and build Right. Uh, okay. No, nothing came out of the Trumpy okay. thing. I actually, I, I didn't see him when I went on Friday. I'm going again. I heard him for the first time, like the day after our meeting. Yeah, see, that makes sense. Did you, you see you his know, picture? Since you're not going yeah. to ask office. He's, 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 he's a trip. Yeah. Yeah, you have to ask the office. Yeah, you can be checking the office. And sign up. And let me know when you do I think he has a spell check when he says he needs some things to Yeah, we're going to have a spell check. Maybe we're not going to be very like that. Auto incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can go ask in the office and then. We can like work with him. Yeah. If, if we you, all want to. If you sign. Yeah, that's a spot. I can do it. I'll do that. Um, also. And what do we need? Can I say that we need to work on the physical? Yeah, guys, if this is like the point where we really need to refine the PowerPoint and. We're going to try to add a section for the survey, like results, into the Google Doc. 
Well, so does that everyone be... know what the issues were with the parking? <coughs> the power of the issues were that the economic section was really lacking. Faulty. Yeah, a very lot faulty. Of the I don't think that, I think a small portion was wrong. It was mainly just like weak. I think it was just not totally clear. If you can just like el elaborate. You can all go in and elaborate. Well, you, you can also punch it up with your survey results. That would yeah. go into the economics, so yeah. that, was, oh, that would flesh it out. So if you could come up with something like a graph right. or something. We just need to get those like gathered, because right now. Yeah, so, so we'll you guys are going to do that, right? Sure. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything we need to like clarify okay. now about the final thing, like people helping set up? Um, if you can, maybe get here like 15 minutes early. Please bring food. Bring food, bring, if you have like streamers at your house. Is that the first yeah. Wednesday? You know what you should also have is kind of important name tags. Name tags? Name tags so the kids coming in can see who you are. And, and okay, okay, I can go pick them up from like CVS or something. Yeah, it just says, and, and actually Isaac can get you some money for that problem. And, and name tags and Writing on the name tag that you're a youth commission member. Okay. So um, that they know who to talk to and who to ask and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know what's going to happen. If kids do come in, they're going to stand by the door, terrified. They may even be with their parents. This is like even more embarrassing. Because, and then, and then, we have to make sure that they don't feel like they just walk into something cool and they have no business being there. So. Okay. Do you have any idea what Do you have like a player? Oh yeah, I have a player. Does it does it work better, guys, if we do the thing where you're like, if your last name starts with blah blah blah, blah bring on entree. Does that work better? Yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah, 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 that's good. <coughs> okay, so I will we'll post that on the post Facebook that? group. Is that yeah. a good way for everyone to communicate? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And like well, anyone's welcome, like bring them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we say everyone has to bring one person? It's recommended you bring two. Cool. Do we have a meeting after? Five. Five. Is where we all find like that? Nope, that is it. That's it. This is the last time. I'm going to bring it. It's like all the best. Or I guess we It would just be like, we didn't ask people. Some people do, they didn't answer. What would it cost? People who might want to do that. We've done so much. Yeah. Yeah. So for one last thing, I think in order to be better organized, we're going to make a group as an, an, an event on Facebook. Um, if you can add whoever you're bringing to that event, that way we can have a head count. Should we bring like sophomores and freshmen and stuff? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you like, if the only people you can grab are juniors, and that's fine. Yeah. Preferably younger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you want to work for officers. I'm very versus if you get rid of it. One should the election do. The election for officers? Yeah. It's one we convene next time. When we start to convene for the first time, then we have to elect our new officers. In the fall? In the fall? Yeah, in the fall. Can we have a conversation with you about talking to the media and family stuff? Next. Room. No, it's it's the first one. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Just for like next year. For like next year. Because I know you like have to do stuff with like sending in the schedule. Yeah. Sending in the agenda. All of them. I can write that down for you. And also, was there anything? Was there also anything last year that you had at the table that was like stuff that you remember then? We should like do. We had printed out articles of like stuff that the commission had already done, which last year was like the gun control stuff. And candy would be a really good. Idea. I really, I really highly, highly suggest music. music. I can get all the candy. Music, large or not candy. Good guys. Like a traffic guy. No. How are we gonna find you for the music? Ah, darn it. Yeah.